Hello and welcome to Tinkertube's lab. Recently I scored this nice big package from eBay for around 90 euro. And I guess it is really an auction score. It should be a piece of test equipment which was sold as kind of working. Um, the seller said, please excuse the noises from that side. I hope it stops right now. However, the seller told me that the item stop it that the item is partially working which means it has a, a collector for the values on the front and also on the back god damn it let me close the window Um, as I said, it has connectors uh, on the front and the back, and the seller said that only the backwards contacts are working, so it should be an easy fix, especially when I looked at the pictures where you can see a front to rear uh, toggle switch, which was definitely uh, switched on to the rear part. So. I am hoping that this will be a relatively easy fix and with it comes a relatively bargain if you see what is inside this package. So let's crack it open. Yay, we all love those. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> I don't want to spill those flakes all over the room. So, let's do it like this. And that should work. This aside, uh, I'm stupid. I spilled it. So let's investigate further. We got ourselves a IC wire, wire, and. Some packaging material. That's better. So As you hopefully can see, there is a little crack, but that was also in the auction description. I show it to you in this camera as well. You can see it right here. Um, that was already told to me, so that's no problem at all. And maybe someone already guessed what it was looking at the backside. It is a nice vintage Keith Lee 199 digital multimeter with scanner option which is quite nice as it has some kind of multiplex function so that you can read out eight channels controlled over the GPIB bus at once or in a series one after another which is quite nice if you want to measure many values of different test points from your system so let's switch it on Seems to work. At least it switches on, which is nice. Let's switch this on. So. 
So that is 10 volts. But he is not responding at all to the front inputs. Hmm. That would have been so easy. Too bad. Okay. Let's see if the back terminals work. Yes, they work. So the back terminals are okay, but the front terminals are not okay. And it is not the input switch, which is kind of sad. I hoped it for, I hope for it to be a really easy repair. But well, now we can have a look inside and see what could be the fault. By the way, here you can see the rear terminals. Those are the terminals for the scanning option. So let's open it up. Wow, that looks nice. It is so clean, it looks just like fresh from the factory. Very nice. So inside here we can see the relay board, which is conveniently built as a separate unit. And it seems to be disassemblable by just unscrewing two screws. Three screws, I have to be corrected. That's nice. That is really nice. I don't want to know what every one of those relays cost. <laughs> Must be a fortune. Oh, we have a date code. 1987. That's quite vintage. Wait. The copyright, copyright 1987 and 1992. Hmm. What is it now? 87 or 92? The IC is 92, 92, so it's 92. Okay. The date code is 1992. So we know how old this is. Well, basically, this error just, I suppose can't be that hard to trace out as well if you think about it you have two ports where you can measure one works one doesn't and between those ports and the actual uh, converting unit which measures the values there has to be some switching element and basically this is the only part where the signal can get stuck so we should search for that special element which seems to be just the switch. <laughs> it looks like the front bezel just unclips. I'm tempted to try to do this. Yes, it does. But it's hard to do with just two hands, which you may notice. Every wire is firmly attached, so that should not be the problem. I guess it could be the switch. So we should connect a reference signal. Interesting, I just noticed even when I operate the front and back switch, I hope you can see it without the filter no you can't so let's just hold that over there you see even if I operate the front and back switch nothing happens so there's no switching happening interesting so now we should measure if the switch is actually switching and if it is not well, we found the reason. Uh, you can't 
really see it. Oh, that's better. I guess that's okay. So. Let's see. We wanted to know red and black. On the other side, we have also red and gray. So I should measure from there to there. Where does that go? Oh, it's just going on the top side. Okay. Those are just wires. So let's see. That one should be connected to some of those pins. I guess that one. Yes, it is. Also, that one should be connected potentially to that one. Okay. Ah, it's getting switched to there. Okay. Okay, that is getting switched from there to there. And if we operate the switch, this should be connected, but it's not. Also, that should be connected and it is also not connected. Why is that? Well, only one way to find out. We have to get that switch out. Oh, oh, I can see something. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Let me try to zoom in. I don't know if you can see this white tab there. I guess that should be moving when I press the switch. Yes, it's ah, it's moving inside there. So I guess the switch is internally broken, which could be a problem as I don't think it is easy to get that kind of switch as a replacement. So let's try to poke that down there. Oops. Something is moving behind. I'm a bit scared. So. Yes, I depressed it and it went up again. So let's push this down. And now we should have the front connected. And yes, it is. Oh, I should zoom out again. I'm very sorry. Now the front is connected and the back is not. Very nice. So it seems to be just the switch. Let's try to prove it by connecting that again and uh, how can I do this now without killing myself and everything lying around here so well wait just let me put that on there for a second and let's connect red and gray just slightly so that we can see if anything is happening at all. Which is not. Did I accidentally depress it again? Huh. Too bad. What's that? Hmm. Could be another problem. 
But well, let's first fix this switch. <coughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Thou shall switch on your power source first. Oh, <laughs> how convenient. Now we have a reading. Wonderful. So it's just the switch. That is, well, it's nice and not so nice at once, as I have no idea if I can get a replacement or if I can repair the switch. So. Let's try and desolder it first. So now that that is done, I should wiggle each pin to make sure that it is loosened up. So now I'm trying to lever the switch out from underneath by shoving a small flathead screwdriver in between and it works perfectly. So let's get this aside and here is our switch. Let's see if we can disassemble it somehow. Choo! There it goes. Okay. And as you can see, the button is broken. It's broken straight off the contact wiper thing. How weird. How can that happen? Oh, I can get it out. Nice. Can I get it back in? Not quite sure. Okay, there's one missing. There is a contact missing. And as you can see, it is broken just at the smallest point where it's somewhere where it's the weakest. Maybe, maybe it can be glued, but I would rather get an. I would rather get an appropriate replacement for this switch. I'm trying to glue it, even though I'm pretty sure that this is some kind of polypropylene of whatever that is not taking any glue at all. But hey, you can at least hope. <laughs> I don't think that I have a switch like this. I'm taking a look in my drawers. The only thing I have is this one, which is similar but not identical. It is lacking three pairs of contacts, but as I saw on the PCB, the first three rows are not populated at all. They are not used. So I could potentially somehow botch this in maybe at least until I get a suitable replacement I could try it so at first I try to glue this so let's get a ear stick thing And let's thoroughly clean this from 
any residue whatsoever. So that is clean. Let's get the good old 10 cent super glue. Apply a small amount, that is too much. Set a small amount, not half the bottle. Like this. Now we just have to wait until it settles. There is no way this is going to stick to each other. No way. It's not even close. It's just like there has never been any glue. So we should get rid of this and see if we can find online a replacement. So I have searched quite a while now and I can't find any suitable replacement for this switch. Even though, or <laughs> mostly because there is no marking whatsoever, so I have no idea which manufacturer this is and which series, so I just can guess. But since I tend to use this instrument, I would likely try to fit this old switch inside. Um, it is a Alps switch, so it should be a decent quality one. I like the sound. And even though it has two poles missing, we have two poles too much on this switch, so bleh, who cares. And also one leg is missing, but that shouldn't be any problem. We could be able to repair that. So I just seated the switch mechanically to ensure that this is everything is fitting. It looks like the switch is slightly more to the front now, but it should work nevertheless, I hope. So let's solder that. And as I said, you can see the front three rows are not connected to anything, neither on the bottom nor on the top side. So we should be able to, well, it's not really the best way to do even, especially on a meter like this. But, well, what should you, what other thing should I do? Uh, let's make a wire to, a jumper wire to the pads there. Okay, let's re-solder that thing. I just noticed that the repaired leg isn't used either on the original switch, as it is this one here, which doesn't connect to anything on the top and the bottom. So, pull. <laughs> Okay, next thing. Oh, I, 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 it does, it does connect to something, but that's no problem as it is connected through to the other side. And this is the contact row that wasn't populated with any of these sliders in the original switch. So, should be okay. So that is done. It's definitely not the prettiest thing in the world, but it should work. And I don't think it's that big of a deal, even though we are talking about a five and a half digit multimeter. Um, as I said, I guess it should be okay. So we should try it now. So let's recon... <laughs> don't throw it around. Not yet. Just 
just plug this in. Oh, I should zoom back out for you. Sorry. Let's plug this back in until it's slightly and somehow reapply this shield for now. Switch this on. It works. Okay. So the front works. Now I will plug it in the back ports. Switch it to the back and works a treat. So I would say this is perfectly fine now. Let's reassemble it. And I uh, guess we're good to go. Nice. That was quite an easy fix. Yeah, the switch is slightly more out now, but well, at least it's working. And that's what we were after. Also, I decided to place a little bit of hot melt glue onto those watch wires just to be sure that they are not ripping apart and ripping traces while ripping apart. So we should clean this before just because isopropanol alcohol is uh, removing uh, is removing hot glue very nicely so we should get rid of those residues from the flux before while hoping that the alcohol is not actually uh, removing the isolation of the enameled wire. That would be quite disappointing right now. So let's go on there with a toothbrush for thorough cleaning. And let it dry. I'm already hearing all those volt nuts and Keith the aficionado screaming at me <laughs> while watching this video. Um, I guess maybe they though I guess those aren't watching anymore right now. <laughs> but hey it does not have to be completely original it just has to work. That was a nice sound wasn't it? Now we should get the hot melt glue and just gently get a little bit over the wires. Just so that they do not fly around and break off that easily. Now that the glue is hardened, we should reassemble the whole unit. First, I am reinstalling this scanner module. Next we should get the chassis or the outer case, which by the way has some small tilting feet, which are quite stiff. And this just slides in again. Warning, for continued protection against fire hazard, replace fuse with the same type and rating. Warning, no internal operator serviceable parts, serviced by qualified personnel only. So I guess I am a qualified personnel? Since we just serviced this part. Okay. Is the scanner option working? Channel 2. Channel 7. I 
I have no idea how this is supposed to work, so hmm. I'm just guessing. Channel 7. Next. No. Local. Next. Next. Local. No idea what I'm doing. Ah. Mm. Oh, 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 <laughs> I understand it. This is a question mark. So it's asking me which channel do I want? I want channel zero. I want channel one and now it says millivolts one. Okay, I get it. The scanner option seems to be fully functional, which is rather nice. Uh, even though I don't think that I will ever use it, but it's always nice to have. So now we got our Keithley 199 repaired and fully functional again. Even though we had to kind of rework the switch circuit there, because I uh, googled this quite some time right now, I didn't fi uh, find any chance to get a suitable replacement for this switch, so eh. <laughs> it has to work like this. And indeed it does work, so I'm rather impressed by this unit. It works a treat even after so many years, I guess we saw the date code 1992 if I remember correctly. And at least compared to my not so bad Agilent 1251. I guess it's rather nice. And for 90 euro a five and a half digit multimeter with just a, sw a defective switch is really a bargain, I guess. So no complaints about that. I for myself are really pleased with the outcome and I hope you enjoyed this video too. If you did, please remember to give me a big thumbs up and leave your comments. And if you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. I hope to see you the next time back here at Tinkertube's Lab. Until then, goodbye.